Nintendo is the king of minigame collections. WarioWare is the most widely known minigame collection with several games. There is also Wii Sports Resort, featuring 12 games. I love Wii Sports Resort. Now, does this game come out to the Wii Sports Center, or will this be recognized as the biggest failure in launch channel history? We'll find out right now. There are 12 games in Nintendo Land, so I'm just going to give a short summary of each game, going from my favorite to my least favorite. Octopus Dance. This is a game where you must mimic the moves done on the robot in rhythm with the two left and right joysticks. The controls are always responsive and the game is a huge challenge. I think this game is just a perfect starter. Donkey Kong's Crash Course. In this game, you have to tilt this weird thingy through the Donkey Kong girders to reach the finish line without using all your lives. This is an innovative use of the new controls. You use the shoulder buttons, both joysticks, even the microphone. The only difficulty is the delicacy of the object. You can go down a hill at a mile an hour and you'll still break the tilter. Oh well, the game is still lots of fun. Captain Falcon's Twister Race. Are you ready to go on the roads and ride 100 miles an hour? Well, this, this with this game, you're going to have a lot of fun. In this Mario Kart lookalike, you'll guide your cart through sharp turns, obstacles, and speed panels. This game is a lot of fun. The only problem is that when the connection is lost, it becomes not calibrated, and the game doesn't care if it's calibrated. So you end up failing the game anyway. But it's still a good game. Mario Chase. In this game, Mario runs away in a maze. The Toads must find him within the time limit or else Mario wins. This game is very fun, but it only has three courses and we come, can become a bit boring. But still, it's a fun game. Luigi's Ghost Mansion. By far, this is one of the most talked about games in E3. This is another multiplayer game like Mario Chase, like I said before. In this game, you can either be the ghost or the investigators. The investigator's job is to find the ghost and shine light on it long enough to make it die. The ghost's job is to scare the finders or leave them all dead. The concept is fun and is a great party game. I highly recommend it for any time you have friends over and you want to play a good game. Balloon Pop Breeds This is by far one of the most retro games inside this collaboration. In this game, you have to fly around and catch balloons by making gusts of air on the gamepad. The graphics are incredible and the concept is great, but the game lacks difficulty. I beat it after my fifth game! Really, the fifth game! The Legend of Zelda Archery and Swordplay this, is a ga this game is simple. Just kill the monsters and find the Triforce. The game rules are very straightforward and the controls are nice. I think it's a fun game. Takamaru's Ninja Castle. In this game, you must throw ninja stars at the ninjas to kill them. It looks interesting at the E3 demonstration, but it gets old fast and the controls are shaky. And the game can get very difficult. Even though there are only four parts. Metroid Blast. In this game, you destroy waves of enemies, either on the ground or in a hover thingy. The controls can be a little complex, but it's normal for this kind of game. It's a nice game, but you won't remember it as the best game of this generation. Yoshi's Fruit Cart! In this game, the object is to collect all the fruit by drawing a path for Yoshi. The catch is you can only see the fruit on the TV screen, not the tablet. The main problem is that the game is way too difficult. I still cannot believe beat this game. Animal Crossing Sweet Day. One person has to collect the candy and another person has to catch them. The object of the collectors is to collect 15 candies and bring them to their base. The catchers have to catch them three times before they deliver all the candy. The bad thing is when you get to three players, the rules change. And I honestly think that it takes away the fun from the game. And finally, Pikmin. The object is to defeat the enemies and get to the rocket to leave the planet. The story is too basic and the game seems boring. 
It just feels like it isn't worth their time. Unlike all the others. One of the things I want to praise the game for is its difficulty. Once you beat most games, you have a feeling that you've accomplished so much, when all you've done is just beat a Nintendo game. For every game you play, you receive coins. These could be used to play the coin drop game. After you beat each level, you receive a prize to decorate the place. Honestly, I don't know what good that does for the park. It's just a thing to waste your time. Nintendo Land is a great game. Despite any minor slip-ups in the game, I'm rating it overall, not game by game. In that case, I highly recommend you get this game. If you want a Wii U, get the black one. Nintendo Land originally cost 60 bucks, but with the black one, you get $10 off. So what's the point in not buying it? What do I think of the game? What does it deserve? It was good, and I think it's appropriate to give this game an A-. minus. Thanks for watching. Next time, I'll be doing something else. See you to the then, and don't forget to comment and subscribe for the next video.